be watching Uncommon 59. This is Gold One. I think it's on PC. Uh, playing on Paradiso. Uh, and they're going to be playing Risa, Ramatra, and Diva. That's what they said. What am I doing wrong? Please help. In this game, I'm really trying to pull out, put to use all the tips I've seen or get, and I'm just struggling to see why we lost this one. I don't think my positioning was bad, but there were some times where it was. No one was saying anything all game, and of course the enemy tank said main tank diff to be toxic, but like, I really don't get what I was doing wrong this game. I don't want to say it was the sports fault or DPS fault, but I really don't get why. Okay, so I'm going to do a quick review, hopefully, um, and, try to, and try to help you out. So I did a pre-watch of this. I think the short answer is your mechanics as tank are just simply not that good. <laughs> um, you take too much damage and you deal too little damage, which results in you losing space slash losing teammates, which results in you just getting walked over. So let's, let's kind of walk through this. So starting from the very beginning, okay? So right now, they're all coming out, and let's just kind of watch to see what happens. You're spamming right now, you miss a lot of this, right, because it's actually hitting the wall, and then you're going to start taking damage, right? You see you take a bunch of damage from the left, then you take even more damage. You've already lost 250 health and done almost no damage. So if you look at their ult charge, like you see the Zen's at 6 and the, the, the Junkrat's at 7. So not a big deal in the grand scheme of things. You're going to step out, and you're going to take some even more damage here, right? Again, you take even more damage, you take even more damage, and now you've gotten forced out. So the Junkrat's already at 22% ult charge, <laughs> which is not very good, right? For perspective, your DPS have 5% and 13%. So the Junkrat's like double the, the, the ult charge of your, of, your, of your DPS because you're just taking so much damage, right? Now, Ramatra comes down, pop shield. As a general rule, do not attack Ramatra shield. It's a thousand health, but it only lasts four seconds. So it's almost never worth shooting. Like I literally would just reload and just stare at it or shoot the side of it if someone was available at the side. Um, so you should back up right now because you're really extended. You honestly could have just died right there. Again, you've taken even more damage right now. And then your Sim dies. Unfortunate. Um, it's not really like immediately your fault that the sim dies i would say that your inability to force anyone back kind of leads to this though so for perspective what i would have done up here is i would have done a better job pushing back these three or slow them down or anything just with better staff aim vortex usage etc and that would have not allowed them all to walk up so fast which would have prevented your sim from dying or made it less likely that your sim would die but ultimately you know kind of is what it is it's not the, the, the worst thing in the world i think this is a really bad position because you're super low okay and you have a flank route on your right this right room and this is very common that they will take this flank route. So this shield is easily flankable by the junk rat who can come behind you. You're very, very low. You should come back and play this corner, which is much safer. Because that way you keep both of the entrances in front of you instead of one of them on your side. You're attacking right here. You get super low. Right. You pop Nemesis to mostly just stay alive. Right. You're blocking right now, which is not good because you're full health, right? So you should be farming ult charge. Right. Just punch right now. You should, you should be punching. You do not want to swing this wide from the corner. This is a very common mistake that you make, is that you swing way too wide, right? You want to stay nice and tight. Take to the corner, that way you can't get shot. And you see the junk rat's already flanking on your right side, so you need to be backing up right now. Right, you're down one. So again, like this fight is it's very hard to win. You gotta you gotta stall for time. Your Lucio goes in because he's crazy. Alright. Junk's on your right, you take even more damage. Notice the junk's already at 54% ult charge. <laughs> um, very, very hard to deal with this. I don't know why you walk forward right now. You're down one player. Right? Now your Lucio's gonna die, so now you're down two. So your perspective should either be, I guess, suicide right now, which I would not recommend, or just simply play the back side of the point and give time for respawners, okay? the It is way harder for them to take this point if you play back. So on uh, the single point captures on hybrid maps, right? typically, the closer you are to the point, the easier it is to hold, and you only get one fight. So you don't want your first committed fight where people die to be out here you want your 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 committed fight like the win or die to happen all the way back here where your team has high ground control right a lot of space and they don't have cover right now if you do a lot of damage they can just get a walk away from you because there's so much cover again another example where you just don't play core as well so you have 327 health you're 217 health you should be playing this spot right here but instead you see how you wandered to the middle of the lane you should just be dead right now you're very lucky that they don't do enough damage right here to kill you and then Again, you get super low. Now is not the time to just be to, to be attacking, right? Your Ana's trying to pocket your mana. Just hold hold block, go backwards. Punching right now is no good. Like, the Ramatra's not even about to die, right? You don't give your Ana any chance to save you, number one, by standing out in the middle, but number two, not by holding block. If you're standing here holding block, there's 0% chance you die right now. So you just get walked over and die. You're going to swap to Risa here. Right. 
This is all fine. Regular. Yeah, don't even, don't even bother shooting the shield. It's like it's not worth your time. You're gonna hear that Zen charging. When you hear the Zen charging, I would peek him because, like, why not? I know he's close if, he's, if I can hear him charging, and I would have gone for that javelin kill. It's a good attempt. Get the Zen low. It's fine. Do not pop fortify unless you absolutely have to as a Risa. I think it's a very common mistake. Fortify is a super long cooldown. And if you don't have fortify, you can get walked over. So do not pop fortify here. Right? You're at the corner. You have supports with you. You're safe. It's fine. Don't don't peek when there's a shield. It's not worth your time. Also, don't let your weapon overheat ever. If you tap fire it, by the way, it heats up much slower. Okay. Again, don't don't overheat and don't shoot shields. Don't shoot the mantra shield. It's fine. It's not your job to deal with that flank, right? Just hold back the front of the team. It's fine. So you get super, super low here, which scares your Ana, and then she ends up nandoing. Again, when you get low, don't walk away from the corner. Play tight to the corner, which forces the Zen to really overcommit to attack you. If you stay out in main, the Zen's going to feel a lot safer to attack versus if you play tight to the corner, right? Just understanding corners is so important to playing Overwatch in general. And I think that your your learning of that probably gets stunted a little bit because you play tank, which is so tanky. All right, so on a nano, you're, this is not a great nano. Um, so because like it's just not a great situation, you're gonna have to push around the corner. You're not gonna get any team help. Like this is this is kind of an unfortunate nano that's forced by by you getting low and your Anna making a poor decision because you didn't get Anna there. The good news is you managed to force Trance out of it, which is extremely lucky. I would just spin away. Yeah, I mean like what are you gonna do here? I would be ready to play this corner because I do not want the soldier to swing on my supports. So I, I sit this corner, and if the soldier's gonna swing, I step forward, and then I ult. All right, he goes back. That's fine. All right, unfortunate. I'm probably just gonna give up. Yeah, just, just die here. It's okay, because you're gonna get another contest here. So trap gets put down. This is really unfortunate. Uh, this is a trap. I would immediately fortify, which is right call. And then you want to get to the cart. You have to get to the cart here. If you do not stall the cart, nothing matters. Even if you get a 5k, if they cap here, nothing matters. Because then their spawn will be right here anyway. So there's no point in winning this fight if you do not stall point. Unfortunately, you do not stall point. <laughs> so, like, everything you do out here is moot. And what I'm generally reading here is that you don't have a, a really strong understanding of the way the game of Overwatch plays out, right? Which probably makes sense. You probably don't have like a ton of hours of the game. So ultimately, it's still an objective-based game. It doesn't matter how many kills you get if you do not like contest or advance the objective. So you dying here, or you you rather not contesting here, is makes everything relevant because, again, if you kill everyone here, all it does is buy you 15 seconds for them to come back out of spawn. So you don't want to waste any resources here. But if you stayed here and fought on point and then killed them all, then they have to run all the way back from their spawn. So then you buy like 30, 40 seconds of time instead of 15 seconds, which is a massive difference, right? I would also note that it is four minutes into the game and you have yet to pop your ultimate. All right, I'm gonna go play here. Pulling top left, which I think is fair, right? I would go for the jump. I, I, low ground doesn't matter. That junk on your flank is doing a ton of damage and farming char ult charge, even though he already has it, right? He's just continually blowing you up from the side. Just go and deal with the junk, right? Shoot the trap, right? Spin into him, javelin, right? Force him to either go back or get the kill. See, this spin ends up being useless because, right, like, what it, nothing happens here. By the way, you should be going for the Zen right now. Zen should always be your priority target, as all heroes, if the Zen is easily available. I don't really understand why you jumped off this to begin with. Like, why, why jump here? Just just walk off. Also, I have no idea how you got boosted. I mean, you must have taken that explosion from the junk rat. All right, I still would have gone for the junk rat in this situation, by the way. See? Like, just kill the junk! No, not the Ramatra. Kill the supports. You had, you had a great line to, to attack the supports there. So I think overheating there was fair because I think we were gonna get killed. But all right, so you're setting up for next fight. I would look back right now. You don't look back at your team enough to be like, okay, where are my supports set up? My Ana is like super far forward, so that forces me to fight here, right? Versus if my Ana was over over here, for example, I could play differently. But my Ana is this far forward. I have to I have to fight this soon. Again, don't shoot shields. This is the problem with your Ana being this position, and with you being that position, which forced your Ana to play in that position. So, this is really tough to take that fight. Kiriko's really tough to hit with the Risa. I would just recommend spinning into her and then forcing uh, 
don't don't do this. <laughs> so I know you're like, okay, I'm gonna block ult the advisor, but like you're not gonna actually do anything. You see how how futile this looks? He's definitely after he kills going to run back this way and go for the rest of your team. Like you should already be advancing. And the biggest problem here is that you weren't holding high ground to begin with, which you were doing well the previous fight, but poorly this one. Because if you look at this from like a meta aspect, you lose this fight because the other team is going to take high ground, and then you're just gonna get walked over. And there's nothing you can do as a tank, right? You see how they've taken left, right? The Reaper goes in too early. Oh, it gets the Zen pretty low. Oh, it kills the Zen. Actually, it's fine. Right? So, again, you're backing up. You see the Ramatra's access to your backline because you're not there. Like, your job is to prevent the Ramatra from walking forwards, right? Now the Soldier's access, and then everyone's just dying here. And all you need to do is just be standing high ground, and none of that happens. <laughs> this, uh, this video makes me want to do a Pariso guide for tanks. Again, I would point out it's five and a half minutes into the game, you still have not popped your ultimate. So the trance is popped. Right, I think it's fair. Uh, I think this is an okay ultimate, yeah. Oh, missing that javelin's big. So, big question here is, did you need to pop fortify? I do not think you need to pop fortify. You're at 330, yeah, you're 330. You're totally fine here. You're at 330 with your support with you. Like, you did not need to pop fortify here. And then not having fortify means that this tire kills you. Because if you just pop fortify, the tire doesn't kill you. Impossible to tire kill you. All right, so let's watch offense. So as D.Va, it's very important to be realistic, like what can I actually get done here? Again, don't shoot shields, especially don't use micro-missiles to kill shields. Micro-missiles should be used to kill people. So flying into this is obviously a terrible idea. <laughs> um, they just do too much damage, right? And you just get obliterated here. And my read here is that you probably don't play a lot of D.Va, and you don't know how much damage D.Va can take, and you don't really know what to be doing as D.Va. So I'm going to link my D.Va gameplay guide because this is like a, a pretty fundamental, this is basically just walking to enemy and dying, um, which tells me that you just don't really know how D.Va works. Instead of doing this, what I would have done is go for this Torb, <laughs> who's all alone, right? Just fly over here, blow up turret, right? Shoot the Torb, you probably don't get the kill, but he just runs back. Great, that's space creation. You don't need to be running up here. These two up here are not doing anything right now. But that Torb turret is preventing your team from moving forwards. So again, don't use missiles from long range. This this tells me again, like that you have no idea how to play Nemo. Which is fine. I mean, like, if you're learning a hero, you're learning a hero, but like that's why you're gonna lose the game, because don't play heroes that you're learning if you're trying to win the game. Like to win this game. If you're trying to win overall, yeah, it's a good idea to learn new heroes, but well, if you're trying to win, you should play the heroes that you know best. Again, you land more missiles than you really should there, but do not use missiles at long range. Use missiles within like three to five meters. There's no reason to DM, he's not even facing at you. Um, but going over here, you should have heard the Torb on your right. The Torb is the person you should be attacking right now, because the Torb is way out of position. I don't think you have a good feel for how little damage your cannons do at long range. And when I say long range, I mean like 7 meters away, not like 20 meters away. So, in case you didn't know, D.Va does 217 damage per second. Um, for a second and a half when she's using missiles, assuming no headshots. That's actually bonkers. You can like almost instantly kill a 200 health hero. And that's just not a burst that you use at all. So again, this shield is not super good. I think I, spinning through this is viable to just create some space and start working on the Ramatra. Right, Ramatra's in the position. I think chilling for now. Don't pop fortify now. If anything, you should have pop fortify when the Rotter was punching you. But now, what are you going to do with fortify? Right? It's like just shoot this Ana on the high ground. That's not doing anything. Like you have to shoot the Ramatra here. Ideally, you shoot the supports, right? But the Ramatra is walking over your team, and this is a really tough thing I think for tanks to deal with. Is like they get advice to shoot the, shoot the back line, but they're like, but the tank is in my face. If the tank is in your face, you usually have to shoot the tank, unless you're a, a tank that specializes in killing the back line, like Winston, for example. Okay, so the Ramatra's out of position, right? This should be a kill. So I would do this, and then I would spin him this way, out of position, so he can't get healed by his team. Right, javelin, then spin to kidnap. Nope. Right, now you spin to stay alive. Now you pop fortify. 
So when soldier visors pop, turn around. Right? None of this matters. Like these three don't matter. Turn turn around. Be like, where's the soldier? Because you could have killed the soldier easily while you just stood on high ground shooting your team. Like you hear this, right? You gotta know. Like you know the direction it's in, and you see how he just kills everyone behind you. Better this javelin. Nope. Like you have javelin available. Uh, actually, I guess you don't have javelin available. Yeah, you just have to just have to track him better. But again, totally winnable fight if you just you just stop the soldier. Right? Your team has huge advantage there. So when you javelin there, there's a good chance the soldier gets knocked off. So after I javelin him, I would have immediately ran to the other side to try to kill him, which is what happened. Okay. You should have been able to kill that soldier. You just track that javelin would knock him off. Uh, so they're down one right now. You are down none. Yeah, you got everybody, so it's five and four. Don't waste javelin on turrets. So recognize, like, hey, who's who's overextended? Do you pop fortify too early here? Like, you don't actually need it. Your supports are still healing you, All right? Go for the torb here for sure. I think spin here is good. Step back, get beat. Don't walk into the vortex. Don't walk into the lava. So. This is like an okay ultimate. I, I think that you made a lot of mistakes just losing so much health and putting yourself in a bad position where you have to hold right now or else you're gonna die. Ideally, you would have pulled the soldier into this too. Pump fortify, you gotta fortify the whole time. Fortifies up, fortifies up, fortifies up, fortifies up, and you just die. When you're under a lot of pressure, you can just hold down the fortify button, shift on PC, uh, and it'll pop as soon as it's available if you don't wanna like think about whether or not it's up. It's go time. So you finally get a cap. Now, your problem on this point is that this is a very vertical point, and playing brawl tanks is are typically really, really bad here because you have no. But like, think about it. If you stand down here, and they stand up here shooting at your team. How do you stop them from doing that? And the short answer is you can't. Right? Like, it's very, very difficult playing brawl tanks here. So I would switch to like Diva or Winston or or somebody else. You know, Doomfist, Ball, whatever. You know, whatever you got to be able to contest this point because you're gonna have a lot of trouble here dealing with high ground. And so we're just gonna see, hey, look, you're working on the Ramatra, great. And now we see that they're just on high ground shooting you and then you're gonna die. And it forces Coalescence out because you get so low, the more it's too late. But we're gonna come out again, same deal, right? Soldier just stands high ground. He's shooting at you slash shooting at your team. Right? You kind of force these two back. And a little Annihilation gets popped. All right, you get purple and then you die. Next life, right? Again, soldier standing on high ground, right? Kiriko standing on high ground. You're kind of looking for a side route here. Like you hit the Ramatra, but like none of this matters because you can't move the cart. You know, Junkrat kills your Lucio on the side because like there's nothing, what are you gonna do about it? <laughs> right, you stand on the cart, Ramatra's just stalling, right? He doesn't need to kill you, he just needs to stall. All he has to do is stall here and he wins. Right, see both supports are just healing him. Again, your supports cannot stand step forward because they get so low. You see how low the Baptiste is? Like, he's forced to have to fight the soldier constantly, which is why you're not getting nearly enough healing. Right? Soldier's still behind you. Right? Now he kills kills your Baptiste in the back. So this is just like fundamental tank misplay. Like you just don't recognize how important high ground is. Right? Yeah, like you see, like the soldier, no one is doing anything about the soldier. <laughs> And like if you're a DPS, don't play anybody who goes high ground, then you have to play somebody who goes high ground because it's your job to clear out those angles. Right? And this last fight, but like, you're not even gonna get to the card. So it's the same thing over and over again, is that you just don't know how to deal with high ground as a brawl hero because you can't. Like, it, I wouldn't be able to do any different. Like if you, if, I, if you force me as a GM tank to play this game, play Arisa, and you're like, I, you cannot switch to any other hero, I probably wouldn't be able to do any better because like I'm just gonna have to go down main. Like maybe I can go top left. Right? And like I could like spin and jump over. It's like the only thing that I could really do, but it's like quite easy to deal with that. What else are you gonna do? You're just gonna lose. So overall, I would say in summary, number one, uh your your mechanics, right, in terms of just taking cover and dealing damage, like dealing more damage than you're taking, is quite poor uh on on Ramatra, number one. 
Uh, number two, on D.Va, it doesn't look like you know how to play D.Va at all, quite frankly. I, I think that it looks significantly worse than your Orisa and Ramatra gameplay, and you probably need a lot more hours on it to 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 get better, right? And just understand the flow of D.Va and how to how to play it. And then finally, um, the last thing, I mean, third thing to note is you didn't use ultimate for like over five minutes or whatever, which is disastrous. I think you should be using ultimate probably every minute and a half, two minutes, ideally, if you're good. Um, and then finally, the importance of high ground control. And when you play a hero that does not control high ground and they stand high ground and light up your team, that is your fault and you need to figure out how to deal with that. Right? Either figure out how to take high ground as a brawl hero or play a diving hero that can take high ground. All right, I'm gonna stop there. Hopefully this is helpful.